Anon, Poster Boys, and Late Phases from all over the streaming world of streamingness. This time, I'm Miss Cast Entertainment. Here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Get to the Boat. Welcome, Miscast Miscreants, to another episode of Miscast Entertainment with your magical hosts, the wonderful JJ. Hey, guys. The magnificent Greg C. I'm here. And yours truly, William Davis Moore. If you're new to the channel, then just know that together we have 30 plus years' experience as film writers, film critics, film app producers, film book publishers, and cinematographers. And if you're new to the channel, please head on over to the channel, check out some of our past episodes so you can get all caught up. And while you're there, please hit that subscribe button and smash the bell next to it so you get notified of all future episodes. Um, on today's episode, specifically, this week was a shitty week for movies. Yeah. So we did not have... Uh, a movie to go see or review in the theater. Not that we wanted to. There's nothing, nothing out there. It's yeah. garbage. It was trash. Kane got crapped on. It's the whole summer. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, summer's and over. Who wants to see a movie about a kid yeah. with a freaking gun? I don't, it's Oscar the whole premise. season's going to start here pretty soon. So Yeah, yeah. well, it ain't now. So, no. so no. we decided to challenge each other to uh, watch some shitty movies for each other. I don't know why. Because <laughs> you can't even challenge each other with good movies. So... <laughs> Let's, well, uh, we picked movies from uh, streaming services. Yes, we wanted to make sure that there's there's so many movies out in the streaming services mm -hmm. that we decided to you know just kind of like save a couple bucks and challenge each other to watch a movie that right. neither that we hadn't seen before. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah. First up, I challenged uh, Greg here mm -hmm. with watching Anon with Clive Owen. In a world where privacy and anonymity are things of the past, Detective Sal Freeland searches for a mysterious woman he believes is responsible for a string of brutal murders. Unable to trust his glitchy optical implants, Freeland relies on some good old-fashioned detective work to find the elusive killers. Will he solve the murders before he becomes a victim himself? Find out in Anon. Look, and you are dead. Well, it was like basically a detective movie. So it starred Clive Owen as Detective Sal Freeland, Amanda Seyfried as the girl, and uh, it was directed by Andrew Nichol, who also directed Gattaca and Lord of War. Um, basically what this was, was a, um, a futuristic kind of uh, almost film noir where nobody has any privacy anymore. Uh, everybody has these sort of implants in their eyes where uh, if you just look at somebody, you can tell how old they are, what they do for a living. You get their whole background. Cool. And this is just as you're walking down the street. I you can see, do that now, though. What's that? I can do that. Do you have Google Glass? No, but I can like look at somebody and I could pretty much tell how old they are and what they do for a living. Because sometimes they, they still have like their like their blockbuster shirts on. Or, oh, or, or oh my God, what the hell is that? It's some yeah. Alaskan movie. There's only one. Service. Yeah, there's one left in Alaska. <laughs> oh, must be yeah. no, no. around Alaska. <laughs> so anyway, so um, so what happens is basically uh, uh, <clears throat> Clive Owen, Detective Clive Owen, Detective Sal Freeland. He's walking down the street one day and he sees uh, Amanda Seyfried. And as he's passing her, the um, augmented reality that pops up around her just says, unknown, error. And so it's a whole mystery about who this girl is. And uh, there are people dying. And, you know, their, their points of view are being hacked. So they see the killer shooting them and all this kind of stuff. Um, it was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. Although I have to admit, I fell asleep twice watching the movie. So it took me a little while to get <laughs> it took me a while to get through it. Did you fall asleep because of the movie or were you just tired? Uh, well, I did. I, I, I Probably a little <laughs> bit of both out. because I did start it kind of late in the evening uh, both times I watched it. Um, but overall, I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. It was um, lots of POV in this movie to get the augmented reality thing down. Um, uh, had a very retro kind of look to the future, almost like a '50s kind of um, kind of look to it. Have you, either of you seen the show Counterpart on Stars with uh, No J.K. Simmons? No, no, no. I don't have stars. Okay, uh, it's a pretty good show. I have to say that. Um, but the the look and the feel of the of the two of Anon and uh, uh, Counterpart they look pretty similar um, aesthetically. So uh, I enjoyed that, the brutalist architecture in it, the uh, uh, retro cars, 
they would call the cars. Uh, you see the augmented reality pop up against one of the police cars, and it says a hydrogen-powered Toronado replica. Cool. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I had questions about this movie. I w it, it never explained how the technology worked with the augmented reality in the eyes, um, why everybody has it. Was it implanted in them when they're at birth? Uh, or it's kind of, it was kind of like a forced uh, a forced augmented reality. Everybody has it. And if you didn't, and if you were like this Amanda Seyfried character who just shows up as an error, then there's something wrong. You're hacking, you're hacking the system. You're living on the fringes of society. And it ends up being that she's some sort of assassin. Um, so it's kind of like a, a Blade Runner meets a Minority Report kind of situation? Uh, kind of not as futuristic not as sci-fi as that. It was it was very akin to our way we live now, but everybody had these augmented reality things uh, implanted in them, and nobody had any privacy. Okay. So it was very it was very 1984ish, mixed with a film noir kind of thing, a uh, detective story, and um, it, it you know it was supposed to be at the end of it. It, it and this is where it kind of it kind of got a little cheesy at the at the finale for me because it ended up being a, um, a statement, supposed to be a statement on privacy. And uh, Safe Read end the movie basically with this line that says, it's not that I have something to hide, it's that there's nothing I want you to see. Mm. And it was supposed to be a very deep line, but I was like, oh God, it kind of made me roll my eyes a little bit. It's probably because we're coming off of a, uh you know, I guess we're going that direction naturally. Sure. We're losing our privacy. Oh, yeah. Technology is becoming more and more like a part of our brains. Yeah. Like everybody's yeah. connected to their phones to the point where they run people over and shit. Yeah. <laughs> or well, walk into well, like We're traffic. not losing it. We're actually giving <laughs> away our privacy. <clears throat> Pretty much. Yeah. But I thought it was well done in the way that they handled the technology in it, like um, how instantaneous everything was in the augmented reality. But you can tell it just by the characters thinking something, it would pop up. Uh, uh, what they were searching for, or who they were looking for, or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and for that reason, because of the POV, it was very exposition heavy. There was a lot of uh, uh, basically explaining what was going on to the audience through the characters' dialogue, you know? And uh, eh, that was okay. It was kind of, I felt a little kind of dumbing down for it, but uh, almost, almost necessary. But um, I don't know. I, overall, I enjoyed the movie. So it wasn't, it wasn't the worst Netflix movie I've seen. Um, apparently Netflix bought this one. It wasn't a Netflix original. Well, they bill it as a Netflix original, but basically they just bought it to distribute it. Which is basically their model these days. Yeah. Well, they do that for a lot. Some, they do actually is, there actually is Netflix Studios that does make right, their own right, content. Right. But, um, so yeah, so I recommend this movie. I would give it three out of five. I don't want right. to watch it. I you actually know? wanted to watch yeah. it. I could never find myself the time to I do it. I thought you saw it. That's why you recommended it to me, because you had seen it. No, I oh, wanted to uh, see I it. I it wanted it. to see it. He was the guinea pig. I guess so. <laughs> so. Well, no, I recommended something I wanted to watch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to watch it now based on this recommendation? Uh, it, like a background kind of thing, yeah. I guess. That's kind of what I'm getting Well, I'm at. mowing the lawn, maybe. Well, when you start off... You're not going to be able to follow twice. it, I don't think, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you put it on the background. So. Oh, right. But it was it, it was decent. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it better than a lot of Netflix movies. Well, at least Clive Owen's in something these days, you know? Yes. Yeah, he was good. He was good in it. Safe Reed was actually good in it. She's she actually looked good in it. I don't... She's... Yeah, okay for me, but she looked good in this movie. She played like that her. chick from yeah. Debbie Does Dallas in that oh, porn. Oh, here you go. Uh, if you, if, this might put it over the edge. Safe Reed does get naked in this movie. Wait, yeah, what do we yeah. see? Tops and bottoms? Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Like the whole thing? The Not bush? the whole thing. No, no, no. But Early butts morning dew? The bees. Okay. Yeah, okay. Bush is a thing of the 70s, bruh. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like a retro. It's kind of thing. making a comeback. Huh? It's augmented reality bush. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> augmented bush. <laughs> augmented bush. All right. So All right. Uh, I've, on. I've gone over. Uh, so the movie I recommended to JJ was a uh, werewolf movie that I enjoyed. I actually saw this movie, uh, so that's why I recommended it. To recommended it to JJ uh, called Late Phases. Ambrose McKinley isn't your typical mild-mannered grizzled veteran. He's blind. Late Phases is a horror movie about what happens when a werewolf starts attacking and you're too damn blind to see it. Well, we can see it, but Ambrose can't. I mean, it would look like this. Anyways, the movie's pretty funny. It's got uh, this blind dude fumbling his way through town and buying silver bullets and killing werewolves and oh shit. Oh, his dog. Oh. 
I did see late phases. I hope and, so. And uh, before this, no, no, okay. I saw it because you challenged me to watch it. Oh, well, that uh, was the reason. Otherwise, I never would have found this movie. This movie is kind of like buried in the Amazon. Uh, yeah. So the, the bottom of the Amazon bucket. Yeah, it was on Netflix for a while and then it moved <laughs> over. So I got to tell you, un unbeknownst to uh, Greg, I think this movie has two of my favorite genres inside. Okay. Movies about werewolves. Sweet. Nice. And movies about blind people. Sweet. Oh, that's blind quite theory. the subgenre. I love movies about blind people. The one with Al Pacino. Hoo ha! Sense of a woman. Oh, yeah, yes. Man. Brilliant. Sir, you're out of order. Out of order. I show you out of order. You don't know what out of order is, Mr. Trask. I'd show you, but I'm too old. I'm too tired. I'm too fucking blind. Yes. The one Let's where. Go drive for uh, that uh, that dude is in the house, and the teenagers come in. Is that get? Is that get out? No, yeah, no, 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 not get. Um, uh, don't hush. breathe. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. Don't yeah. Breathe. yeah, don't breathe. Very cool get movie. Out. No, sorry. Uh, they suck. Daredevil. The movie sucked, but Daredevil the TV show amazing. Yes, yes. Uh, there's a movie with uh, Richard Pryor called uh, and uh, oh, see no evil here, no evil, no evil here, no evil. Classic, classic. Gene Wilder. I'm deaf. Repeat, deaf. Richard Pryor. I'm blind. Repeat, blind. I mean, you can't make a movie about oh, um, uh, Ray, yeah, Ray, Ray. Damn. <laughs> I mean, you we might have to cut that out. No you, can, you can't no make way. a bad movie about blind people. You make a, a a movie with a blind person. It's 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 classic. And werewolves. There's just not enough good werewolf movies out there. This is true. I mean, nothing beats an American werewolf in London. After all this time, there right. has not been a werewolf movie. That Definitely not American there. werewolf in Paris. No. <laughs> So to have uh, this movie, so this movie is pretty much about like a grizzled old veteran who um, is moving into a re retirement home, and he realizes really. he realizes once he gets there that there's freaking werewolves around, and he's got to find out how to like kill werewolves when you can't like freaking see them. What? Yeah crazy it's pretty crazy it's, it's pretty <laughs> it interesting is. now the, the movie's very it's very cheaply done like mm -hmm. the, the special effects are like super ghetto mm -hmm. you don't really see a werewolf until like the last like 10 minutes of the movie and they look awesome <laughs> yeah they're they're a little they're no, a little they don't <laughs> they're they're a little cheap um but uh, watching what's really interesting is watching this blind dude trying to figure out how to mm -hmm. how to kill some werewolves and that that's pretty much it it's it's, it's very b movie it's mm -hmm. very cheap mm -hmm. um would i recommend watching it uh if you're having a beer you want a few laughs it's actually pretty entertaining mm -hmm. so I, I would give it with the b movie mentality in mind i would give it three and a half out of five stars so let me ask shit. yeah so let me ask you this what did you think of the uh, lead actor's performance because that's the reason why, honestly, that's the reason why I recommend it to you because I thought this guy did such a good job. He did a good job of being kind of like a grizzled old veteran, right. but he did an awful job of being blind. And <laughs> okay. let me tell you, I, I didn't find that. There's, but okay. there's this one scene where he does kind of like the ta taxi driver like montage of like him saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to start doing push-ups in the living room. And he starts um, counting the steps in his house that it takes him for, to do different things. One of the things that he practices is how to turn on a light. So he walks five steps, he turns on a light, and the only reason he does that is yeah. so it looks better on camera. But there is no reason in the world for him to have a light, <laughs> no, a lamp in the house. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Quite the opposite. If you are defending yourself against an enemy and you are blind, the best thing to do is to put yourself on even keel with right. your enemy and leave the lights off. Yeah. There is no reason in the world that would have been to his advantage, right? Turning light, light lamps on. Yeah. 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 All right. Good point. Good point. So, so that was it. That, that, it that, sounds like a good freaking movie. Actually. Check it out. Check it out. I it's, do it's want. Fun. I want it's to fun. see it. Is, is it like like a Sharknado type thing, or is it more like? It's better than a Sharknado. It's definitely better. Than yeah, a it's, it's not as corny as a Sharknado. It takes itself seriously. It takes itself too seriously sometimes. So, like, there's a lot of melodramatic scenes that really do not need to be in the movie. Right. Um, Father son stuff. Yeah, it's it's just kind of like over the top. Okay. Um, it's I think the movie kind of intended itself to be sort of like a father son movie in a world where werewolves exist yeah. but it, it just didn't work out all you're waiting for is the next werewolf attack you know? <laughs> but they don't even look <laughs> no they look like crap uh, yeah the werewolf like costumes are not very good but uh, oh you're watching it for the performance and yeah, you know it's yeah. I, it's worth checking out for what it is i think right, anyway, yeah, so that's that why i recommend cool. that one all right so i had to pick a movie for william Shit. and um poor william i thought about 
well, what should I pick for him? And there's t- there's tons of cult movies that I would love William to watch that I know he hasn't seen. But I decided to try something a little different. So I went on this <laughs> website that I use all the time for Netflix called Instant Watcher. And this website is awesome because it gives you a lot of information that Netflix does not. If you're looking for a movie, you can search by genre, you can search by year, you can search by review, you can search by country of origin, popularity. It's this really powerful tool. But one of the fun things that it does is it gives you a random button like right at the top. So I clicked that random button and the first fucking thing that came up was this movie called Poster Boys. Poster Boys. Yeah, yeah. It has all these powerful tools and he uses it to find the worst possible movie. I did not find this movie. <laughs> this movie found you, William. Yeah, apparently it must have been in the in the in the cards or something. Uh, cause that that dude from Academy Award dreamer Shreyas Talpade, director of the smash hit Golmall Returns, Hum Tum Shabana, and Kamal Damal comes Poster Boys. In a small village where women are treated like shit, men can't cook, and Photoshop bus posters may get you drawn and quartered. Three men shunned by the ones they love must battle all odds to destroy the posters and track down the culprits responsible. Starring Sonny Dole as Jagavar Shadhari, Bobby Dole as Vinay Sharma, Samiksha Bhatna, but some Samiksha, fuck it, this actress, and this really hot chick dancing for absolutely no reason, but it's all good because it's the coolest part of the movie. First of all, I've been holding this in. I've been wanting to text you. I've been wanting to call you. I've been wanting to like... With your excitement? I've been like thinking of different ways to get you back. <laughs> so, like, first of all, this movie is almost three freaking hours long. Um, it's all subtitled, and I've never seen a, a real bollywood movie before like i mean i've seen like scenes from bollywood movies i've never seen one were they actually was there actually dancing and stuff in dude this? all right so that was the only good part of the whole damn movie because <laughs> <laughs> this the whole movie opens up with with dancing this really really hot girl dancing with like line dancing but it makes no sense why is it in the movie like it first of all he directed that well all right fine the dude this guy Shreyas Talpade or whatever the hell his oh, name is. I, I'm gonna asking butch William to pronounce I'm, these that's names. That's how you pronounce it. Yeah, I'm that's butchering perfect. the shit perfect. out of these, man. So uh, he um, he also stars in the movie. He's one of the three pe- poster boys, um, dude. All right, it starts with a bunch of shitty special thanks. So like before the movie even starts, it's like all these special thanks, special thanks, blank screen, just special thanks, special thanks. So for like a minute and a half, you're just like. Special all right. Thanks. Special thanks. Special Whatever. thanks. These are all the people that paid money to get this thing made, yeah, I guess. I don't know. But it was like a bad parody of a soap opera. It was like a soap opera that someone was doing a parody of that was trying to be serious. So it wasn't a parody. It was just a bad soap opera. <laughs> it was so bad. There were zoom, like weird zooms and inappropriate times, inappropriate angles for the mood, like low angles when people are happy, which made it really awkward. <laughs> and like... Every single emotion had a sound effect, like boink. This movie sounds awesome. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like an anime. Yeah, when you get two and a half hours into it, you tell me that that boing is still awesome. (laughs) (laughs) They're still boinging after two and a half hours? Every time someone has a slight emotion, there's a sound effect. This guy gets slapped in the face, and they keep doing this goat sound. Why? So it's like crack, but it'd be like, or some, it was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, this it was sounds sound, like an absolute winner. I sound love this movie. Overload, man. And the whole thing felt like it was shot in like 30 frames a second, like someone's home video camera or their iPhone, because it was definitely not 24 frames a second. It was just too crisp and weird looking. Like it was strange. Um, the women in this movie or the culture maybe are just treated like shit. This is my serious point. Like they make a big deal to show that if the guy does, if the guy has to cook his own food or watch his own kids, that he's shunned by society. He's a piece of oh, shit. Oh, wow. Like, he, like society <laughs> like looks at him like a like dog shit. And the women are like, you're supposed to be in the kitchen. You're supposed to be watching the kids. But at the same time, the women are like screaming at the men, like you're a piece of shit too. So I don't, I'm confused. Everybody's a piece of shit. Everybody's a piece of shit. Boing, boing, boing. 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 Yeah. 
All right, whatever the hell sound that was, the goat. <laughs> it's a horse. Mr. Red. It's a yeah, Mr. Red mouth. Yeah, like, so, uh, yeah, then, then the whole point of the story was dumb. Like, the spoilers. Uh, spoilers for everything, by the way. In case you didn't in know. In case you didn't know, yeah. Um, the whole point of the movie is that they someone photoshopped these three guys' heads on a poster that got put on a bus in a couple places in town that said they had a vasectomy. So the whole town tells them to go to hell and basically runs them out of town. Their wives leave them. Everything like they lose because their jobs they had a vasectomy? because they had a vasectomy or thought because, people thought they because they're shooting blanks now they can't they lost their rank in people society. think that they are now they're untouchable yeah apparently. apparently once you lose your ability to spew out children in India that's why they have a billion people I guess but once you lose your ability to have children get the hell out damn yeah it's like that even the at least according like, to this movie yeah and the woman was like take the kids and get the hell out it was really oh, freaking damn. Take wow their kids. That's yeah because it made him look worse so she so it was like a shun to give him the kids it was it was crazy wow this movie's dark man um. This one guy, like, would, for no reason has superpowers, but only randomly when he gets pissed off. So, like, he he freaking <laughs> just randomly will, like, rip a fence post out and beat someone with it. And it, for, it made no sense. That's, I didn't explain That's the it. Hulk. Yeah, it was so weird. Or he'd, like, just throw people and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, um, and, and my final thing that made me want to, like, like, really just tear people apart was at the end credits when they're playing the behind the scenes... <clears throat> Guess what they did? A dance. More dancing, right? They added the fucking sound effects to the to the behind the scenes shit that was uh, supposed to be before production. Oh, uh, <laughs> there's nothing. All right, wait, 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 wait. there's nothing worse than staged uh, bloopers. No, it wasn't staged. They were real bloopers, but someone took the time to go okay. through the oh, bloopers and saying. add sound effects. I got so you, it I was got like you. a post production blooper. It was so so bad, yeah, so bad. That's, so that's I'm gonna cheap. give this one a, a negative twenty. Out of five. Whoa! <laughs> Run like, out and see it, folks. Like, I'm I'm curious. I I know you hated it, but everything you said about it to me is, is selling the movie to me. Look, wa- watch, watch. I'm jealous. Watch the first like 20 minutes, and it's worth every single second. Like, but after that, you will literally slit your wrists. <laughs> yeah, and oh, then you'll man. you'll probably want to be like a feminist or something because it's so bad to win in that whole movie. It's crazy. Ringing endorsements. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it was cool seeing that uh, seeing that kind of fight. Well, you're welcome, <laughs> William. <laughs> no, no, no. You're gonna get it back. <laughs> uh, I'm 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 saving yes. that one. <laughs> <laughs> next time, next time we do this, we're gonna switch it around. So, <laughs> yeah, recommend one to him. He'll recommend yeah. one to me. Randomize oh no, no, we can me. randomize it, and your time will come. All right, <laughs> your time will come. <laughs> and thus ends our first and inaugural. Yeah. Challenge, right? Yeah. So, guys, uh, that was it. That was our uh, challenge for shitty movie summer, basically. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. It, it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. Wait till the next one. Yeah. Go out there and challenge your yeah. friends. And if you have any movies that we think that we should have watched that's on streaming services, please leave them in the comments mm-hmm. below. Also, check out some of our merch because I got to throw that's that right. out oh, there. Oh, yeah. Those are hot shirts. Yeah. Get sweet shirts, sweet mugs. Laser, cat. Laser cats all over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also, uh, just to, to geek your ass out, and if you want to make a, a podcast or anything like that, a lot of the stuff that we're using, like the mics, the soundboard, some of the software, stuff like that, uh, if it's sold on Amazon, I can put a link on it, uh, link for it. It is in our description. So hit that up. Get yourself some of the equipment we're using. Some yeah, of it's expensive. Some of it's cheap. Be like us. Yeah, be like us. Just like us. So uh, that'll wrap it up. And hey, hit the subscribe button if you so feel like it. And be sure if you do do that to hit the bell next to it so you get notified. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Miscast Entertainment. Peace. Uh Uh-oh, I see the smile. (laughs) Hey, you YouTubers. William starts stretching his mouth, you know, like he does like this Joker move right before. (laughs) 